Um, hi everyone, I'm Chang from Johns Hopkins University. This talk is about partial failures and understanding partial failures, how to detect them, and uh, how to localize them. Let me tell a story that some of you might be already familiar with. One night, Bob is working as on-call uh, to maintain his company's Zookeeper cluster, a replicated coordination service. Suddenly, he got pinged by another team who complained that their service, which relies on the Zookeeper cluster, is experiencing a lot of write timeouts. So Bob immediately starts to inspect, but he finds the service is still up. What's odd here is he can still read from the service, but write or quit operations with the timeout. So he goes on inspecting the logs, but does not find any obvious errors. CPU and the memory usage also look normal. He also uses a built-in admin command to query, but everything shows OK. So what's the problem here? In this case, the serializer inside the leader process gets stuck when dumping snapshot to another instance due to a transient network error. However, the serializer still holds the log, so in turn it blocks the request processor module. Since the failure detector is not affected, it still keeps sending heartbeats to other process. Thus, this process still appears to be working. This incidence is actually not a single case. In fact, such partial failures are common in modern software because of their complex internals. For example, a Cassandra process could have more than 200 live threads at runtime. Each of them could experience some problems. An IO worker could get stuck, a background task could silently exit. When this happens, this process may fail partially. Such kind of partial failures can cause very serious impact, like data loss, or system entering a zombie mode. Indeed, partial failures are behind many real-world outages. In this work, we try to first understand how do partial failures manifest in modern software. So we conducted a, a study of 100 real-world partial failures from five large-scale open-source systems. We studied 20 cases for each system. Interestingly, 54% of studied cases occur in the most recent three years software release which suggests partial failure is a trend occurring as the software evolves. Our definition for partial failure is a fault does not crash process, but cause safety or liveness violations or severe slowness for some but not all functionalities. We focus on partial failures on process level instead of service level failure, which might be caused by crash. Our first finding is partial failures do not have a uniform or dominating root cause. The top three root causes, which occupies 48%, are uncalled errors, like runtime exception not called anywhere, um, indefinite blocking. This occurs when some functions get stuck, and buggy error handling. For consequences, we find in 48% of study cases, some system uh, features get stuck. Note that here, stuck means some part of the program uh, was not making any progress, but the process was still not completely unresponsive. And 17% of partial failures caused certain operation to take a long time to complete. The slow in the graph. Here, slow means the performance is severely degraded and the service is barely usable. In our study, we found most study cases would explicitly violate liveness requirement or trigger errors, but some partial failures are completely silent. In one case, uh, after session disconnects, the Apache server reuse the unclean stale buffer to handle new session and return random response. Such failures are usually hard to uh, detect without detailed correctness specification. Another finding is, 71% of partial failures are triggered by some specific environment condition or special input in the uh, production. For example, for one zookeeper case to trigger, we must to have a corrupted packet that is received during deserializing the uh, record length, and the corrupted value has to be a very large integer. For another case, we must have a forward hanging but not crashed when it is in, in the process of drawing the quorum. These kind of failures are very hard to expose or reproduce in non-production environments. We also find uh, diagnosing partial failures a painful experience for developers. But actually, for many cases, their root causes turn out to be simple. For example, just uh, blocking RPC. 
So why are they difficult to troubleshoot? Uh, one reason is mysterious symptoms mislead the troubleshooting direction, and the citizen does not expose enough runtime information. So developers have to enable debug log, analyze heap, or instrument code. We have more findings in our paper. OK, our study shows that the partial failures are common and severe. So how to deal with them? From the study, partial failures are often exposed with only the unique production workloads. So it is hard to eliminate them in the static testing. But the current dynamic detectors, they are too shallow. We need to have more powerful and customized detector to expose this runtime issue. How about asking developers to manually write more defensive checks? Uh, indeed, more checks would help, but it is unrealistic to ask developers to check for each operation in the system, and they have to pay this maintenance cost as the software evolves. So what we want is to systematically generate such checkers to ease their burden. However, atomic generation for co to cover all the uh, failures is difficult because partial failures have diverse root causes. But we observe most of partial failures they do not rely on deep semantic understanding to detect them. Such a checker can potentially be automatically generated. So how to generate an effective checker? Existing checker is ineffective because it is very disjoint with the main program. We believe effective checker should intersect with the execution of a monitored module. We propose an intrinsic software watchdog abstraction. Our watchdog abstraction has three main characteristics. First, each checker should be customized to inspect a certain system module for issues specific to that module. Previously, uh, there are some software watchdogs like Linux watchdog or HTTPD watchdogs, but they are very uh, simple and generic. Our checker's logic should be tailored to monitor module. Second, to accurately reflect the status of the main execution, we need to make our checker stateful, which means the checker needs to use the latest program states in its checking. In our design, we call such states contacts. Third, checkers run concurrently with main execution. Essentially, we decouple runtime checking with main execution. In this way, Watchdog can provide isolation for both performance and safety. The way, the way we build tailored checker is mimic checking. The mimic checker performs a similar operation as the checker target. It has good accuracy because it shares the same fit with the main execution, and it can pinpoint the faulty operation. For the previous example, a mimic checker would do a test of snapshot operation, similar to what a serializer did. As a result, it also gets stuck, and thus watchdog can observe the liveness issue. We designed tool Omega Gen to automate the checker construction. For a given system, Omega Gen would analyze the system source code, um, generate customized checker, instrument the main execution, and uh, finally, package the generated checker and the driver back to the original software. The core technique we use to generate mimic checker is called program reduction. The goal of program reduction is to create a reduced version of main program in a way that it still allows the uh, reduced version to expose the failures that original main program may have. So why we want to do a reduction here? There are mainly two reasons. First, when building mimic checker, we should not put everything to checker. The left code snippy is the function that performs the snapshot operation in ZooKeeper. If we put the whole function into the checker and run, we will see, although the mimic checker can catch the liveness issue, but the code region is just too large to narrow down where the problem is. Second, we don't really need to, need to put everything to checker. If we look at this code snippy, we can see that for a lot of operations, their correctness are logically deterministic. For example, converting string, sorting array, appending a path, which are likely well tested before the production. Continuously checking them at runtime would be a wasting of resource. But some operations, they could have been more vulnerable in the production environment. For example, this write record operation, which depends on the disk, um, network stack, a story stack or scheduling in a specific production setup. Including them in the watchdog checking can likely expose some issues. 
The whole workflow takes five steps. I will explain in the following slides. First, a target uh, system could have very large code regions, but we only care about the part that may execute continuously. For example, the full lifespan of a system module could have uh, initializ initialization, long running, and a cleanup stage. But we're only interested in the failures in the long running stage, and we will output a list of unsure functions that continuously running. And for each such function, we are interested in retaining operations that are worthy of monitoring. Our tool will recursively analyze each function and look for vulnerable operations. Our current criteria in selecting such vulnerable operations are based on heuristics, which by default include I.O. synchronization, a synchronized weight, and etc. We also allow developers to customize this criteria. Once found, we will mark on the vulnerable operations and then construct a checker by extracting all vulnerable operations in a function, removing some similar operations, and add safety and liveness checks. Checker at this point cannot be directly executed because the initialized parameters or vulnerables. So we insert context hooks in the main program to synchronize state. Errors reported by our generated checker could be transient or tolerable. By default, uh, we just simply re-execute the checker and compare for transient errors. Omega Gen also allows developers to write their own validation task and automate the bridging the, uh, the, the task and the individual checker. One danger from watchdog checker is they can accidentally modify the main program state. Omega Gen will analyze all the context reference in a checker and replicate the context for checking use. So any modification will only affect the replicated context and original main program states are safe. To avoid blind uh, replication imposing too much overhead, uh, we will only replicate the mutable part of the context based on the immutability analysis and we lazily replicate the context only when the checker is invoked. But lazy replication brings one issue that um, the context might be different between the time the operation is invoked and the context replicated. For this issue, we will calculate hash code for context object and skip checking if the hash code do not match. We also address I.O. side effects. The main idea is uh, using I.O. redirection and idempotent wrappers. We omit the detail in this talk um, because of the time issue. Now let's talk about uh, evaluation. We apply the tool to six popular distributed systems, Zookeeper, Cassandra, and etc., and successfully generate hundreds of watchdogs for all of the six systems. Note that they are static generated watchdogs. Not all of them would be uh, activated during runtime. To evaluate the effectiveness of generated watchdog, we reproduce 22 real-world partial failures. To compare, we implement four types of the uh, advanced detectors as baseline checker. The client checker is based on the observers in the state of our work parama. The probe checker represents Falcon app spice. We also implement the uh, signal and the resource checker, which are industry practice. Overall, the watchdog detects 20 out of 22 cases with a median detection time of 4.2 seconds. In general, watchdogs are effective for liveness issues like deadlock, indefinite blocking, and safety issues that trigger explicit er exceptions. But they are less effective for silent correctness errors. For baseline checker, even the combination of all checkers, they can only detect 14 out of 22. So here are some uh, uh, negative detection time. It's because checker tested the operation prior to main program and observed the failures. Localization is particularly important for partial failures. The localization level from fine grain to coarse grain is pinpoint the 40 inst instruction, the 40 function, a function in the 40 uh, functions call chain, some entry function in the program, only the 40 process having no localization or even worse, uh, misleadingly pinpoint an innocent process. In the evaluation, Watchdog can directly pinpoint 40 instructions for 11 out of 20 detected cases, while some other checkers often only pinpoint the 40 process. Interestingly, 
the generated check, uh, watchdog exposed a new bug in the latest Zookeeper during the, our fault injection testing. The symptom is actually pretty similar to the, um, the case that we previously talked about. The report helps us to quickly localize the bug. In this case, when doing egg cache uh, serialization, the red integer operation hands and the watchdog will report field checker, field operation, in this case, red integer, type of error, which is timeout, as well as an index of 40 context for developers to inspect later. We have submitted the bug reports and the fix to a developer. The bug has been confirmed and the fix is merged. We further evaluated the false alarms of the watchdogs and the baseline detectors on the various setups. Watchdog did not report false alarms in the stable setup, but during a loaded scenario, they incur around 1% false alarms due to socket connection errors or result contention. The false alarm ratios can be reduced by the validator mechanism. Signal in general can detect most failures along the baseline, but it also has a high false alarm rate. On system throughput, Watchdog imposed 5 to 6.6% 6 .6 overhead, and the main overhead comes from the hooks rather than the concurrent checker execution. For memory usage, interestingly, we find the Watchdog didn't incur a significant memory overhead because we only lazily replicated the, uh, the objects upon checking. Checking frequency is much smaller uh, comparing to main program's execution. In summary, Partial failure is a common problem in modern software systems. We conducted a study on 100 partial failures. Based on the insight from the study, we built a tool, Omega J, a static analysis tool to automatically generate customized checker to detect and localize partial failures. We evaluate our tool on six popular systems and can detect and localize 18 out of 22 real-world partial failures. Report of Watchdog also helps to quickly discover a new bug in the latest Zookeeper. Um, that's all, thank you, and uh, I'm now ready to take questions. Thank you. Uh, hi, Martin, Martin Poole, Google. Um, could, could you explain a little more, does the, you still need to reproduce the situation where the hang or problem occurs during your testing, but this makes it more obvious what the problem is? Is that correct? Or does this actually help you reproduce the rare problem? Oh, yeah, to clarify, uh, to clarify that, the, the, tool, the goal of our tool is not to uh, reproduce the failure or uh, expose a non-failure, but uh, during runtime of the uh, deploy system execution, and we would monitor and detect this um, partial failure inside the process. So, um, but we do find that it would be, um, it, this tool will help us hear that when there is a failure going on to quickly localize uh, where the bug is if there is a software defect. Great. Thank Very you. Very nice. All right, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.